Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the explosion of mammalian diversity that occurred after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs, one lineage of Laurasiotherians quickly occupied herbivorous niches, the Mesaxonians. Containing both the Perissodactyls and their numerous more basal relatives, these mammals can be identified by the structure of the feet, with weight borne on the third toe. In the past, only the Perissodactyls were accepted as being members of this lineage, but recent studies in the 2010s have begun to change this view. Now, many formerly mysterious ungulate groups have been placed here, including the basal Phenacodontids, the bizarre semi-aquatic Desmostylians, the South American Meridiungulates, and the subject of today's video, the Dinoceratons. Originating during the late Paleocene, these superficially rhino-like animals were, along with some genre of pantodonts, among the first large herbivorous mammals. Indeed, dinoceratons were more derived animals than the pantodonts, and appear to have displaced them over the course of the Eocene. For over a century, the classification of dinoceratons was something of a mystery, with several different proposals being raised by paleontologists. Links to Chimolestans were suggested, as well as to Zelestids and Anagallids. Today, the consensus view places them as stem perissodactyls. The group originated in Asia, migrating into North America at the beginning of the Eocene, whereupon the Dinoceratons diversified and grew rapidly in size. While ancestral forms such as Prodinoceras were the size of tapirs, the largest members of Dinocerata, such as Uintotherium and Eobacillus, were as large as black and white rhinos, respectively. These derived genera are well known for their bizarre appearance, with a diverse array of knobs and horns covering their skulls and greatly elongated canine teeth. However, earlier forms were far more modest and unassuming. The oldest known Dinoceratan genus was Prodinoceras from the late Paleocene of Mongolia. This basal animal lacked horns, but already possessed distinctively sabre-like canines. Dwelling in the humid, tropical forests of Asia at the time of the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, Prodinoceras was well adapted for living in closed forest ecosystems. The body was elongated and low-slung, with fairly short, stumpy limbs, allowing the animal easy passage through the undergrowth. Compared to its later relatives, Prodinoceras was rather generalised, possessing a long heavy tail and a less specialised, vaguely dog-like skull. It was large for a Paleocene mammal, possibly weighing up to 500 kilograms, roughly the size of a Malayan tapir. In terms of lifestyle, the animal was also rather tapir-like, browsing on soft foliage in a subtropical forest setting. A close relative, Probathiopsis, was native to North America during the latest Paleocene suggesting that Dinoceratons migrated across the Bering Land Bridge around this time. From here, these animals successfully colonised North America, going on to produce at least four genera here of gradually increasing size. Bathyopsis was an early example, being around the size of a Sumatran rhino and possessing two short horns above the nose. Far more famous was the bulky Uintotherium, which was native to North America and China from the early to late Eocene. The animal was a low browser, roughly 4 metres long and standing up to 1.7 metres tall at the shoulder. Its weight has been estimated to be in the range of 2 tonnes. Its legs were robust to sustain the weight of the animal and were equipped with hooves. Its most unusual feature was the skull, which is both large and strongly built with a tiny brain case. The skulls of males bore six prominent knob-like ossicones that grew from the frontal region of the skull. The function of these structures is unknown, but they may have been used in defence and or sexual display. The large upper canine teeth might have served as formidable defensive weapons, but they were also likely used in intraspecific competition, much as in modern musk deer. Even larger still was the massive Eobacillus, with a name meaning Dawn King. The skull alone was one metre long, and the whole animal was comparable in size to a large white rhino, making it one of the larger ungulates around at the time. Eobacillus closely resembled a more massive version of its cousin, Uintotherium, with three pairs of blunt horns extending backwards across the skull. The foremost pair sat just behind the nose and were small and stubby, while the second pair were taller and more pointed, sitting above the eyes. 
The pair at the rear of the skull were the largest and most bulbous in shape. All of these would likely have been covered with a layer of skin and keratin in life, useful as a form of species recognition. The sabre-like canines were supported by bony flanges on the lower jaw, much as in some nimravids and sabre-toothed cats. These two were probably utilised in mating displays, particularly seeing that the males possess significantly longer sabres than the females. An additional close relative, Tethiopsis, dwelt in western North America, but not much is known about this genus. All of these animals were forest-dwelling browsers, as evidenced by their low-crowned teeth, effective at chewing leaves, shoots, and aquatic plants. An unusual Asian form, Gobiotherium, was among the last of the Dinoceratons. Dwelling in the Middle Eocene of Mongolia, this genus lacked the horns, protuberances, and sabre teeth of its larger North American relatives, making Gobiotherium more closely resemble a small hippo in appearance. Instead, the animal had widely flaring cheekbones and a raised bulbous snout, overall resulting in a rather comically long and low skull. It may have been semi-aquatic to some degree, and lived alongside the somewhat similar-looking pantodont Hypocoryphodon. In all, the Dinoceratons were beasts clearly more at home in the tropical greenhouse world of the late Paleocene and early to Middle Eocene. During the later Eocene, much like the pantodonts, the group went into decline, with only the Chinese species Uintotherium inseparatus surviving into the late Eocene. Their decline is likely due to the gradual drying tendencies that began to occur towards the end of the period, being unable to adapt to the spread of more arid open woodland. Dinoceratons would become extinct before the transition to the Oligocene, much like the Pantodonts and the distantly related Brontotheres. In their place, true Perissodactyls belonging to more modern groups, such as horses, rhinos and tapirs, would continue to thrive, being better able to cope with a changing climate and producing forms far larger than even Eobacillus during the Oligocene. But that is a story for another time. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering some more Alter Earth content, so I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.